Jennifer and John, thank you very much for coming in. We Thanks really appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. How many of your friends have kids that inspired you to write this uh, particular script? A uh, good number of them. I mean, we still have some some friends without kids, but I would say the majority have them by now, and a lot of them had kids in the past four or five years when we were sort of observing them kind of go away from us uh, for a time and feeling a little bit out of sync with our peer group and, and missing that one-on-one -on -one time. and. You know, that was really the kernel of the story. You did a four-year cut from after you, the friends say they're pregnant. You don't really recognize it until a significant chunk happens. You go, hey, but where were those guys? Like, where have <laughs> they been? And then you go, oh, right, they had kids. Like, of course. They, yeah. they either, you know, in certain cases, they would move neighborhoods because you got to move to get to the right school, school district, district or whatever. Yeah. And so they're physically out of your out of your sphere of influence and much less your, your sort of social sphere of influence. So. The, the, the four year jump was more sort of to say like, then that happened and now here we are. Now I heard you did it in 25 days. Um, yes, not yeah. by choice, but yes. So that's pretty incredible. It's the money we had, it's the time we had, it's the time the cast, that's precious, amazing cast, you know, all came together and were available. And, you know, unfortunately it happened to be in, in the dead of winter last year, which was the worst winter in, in the history of winters, basically. Um, and that made it, you know, doubly challenging because every day we'd wake up and it was like, okay, we were supposed to shoot a beautiful wide shot that takes place in September and there's 24 inches of snow on the ground. Like, and one day our camera lenses were frozen solid and we had to blow dry them for an hour. I mean, it's just, it was, it was a mess. It's a larger, sort of larger comment on independent filmmaking though, which is basically just you do what you can with what you have. We also luckily had the world's most wonderful DP in Will Rexer, and he and I, I think, were on rooftops legally and illegally together for about 18 months. And jump out of a passenger van, set yeah. up a tripod in the middle of the yeah. street. In the middle of the street with the oncoming cars. I mean, yeah. like, Christmas shot, we gotta get this. Like, you know, <laughs> shoot a, shoot lock it up. Out, you know, uh, thing. And, and, and we also had Kate Dean, who's a wonderful uh, producer, who was able to you know, call in favors. I'm assuming that you guys kind of knew you were going to be doing it first. Yeah. And then how'd you put the rest of the cast together? Literally the day she finished the script, we said, let's get, let's get some people together and read it just while it's fresh. Let's see what, see what it sounds like, you know, if, if we have anything or if it just is a, is a mess. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and we, so we, we had, we called some, some people and some friends and said, Hey, would you come over? We'll, we'll cook you dinner and we'll, we'll open some wine and, and we'll read it around the table just to see what it sounds like. And uh, and we we got uh, some really wonderful actors to come and 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 come to our house and just do it. And and one of those was Adam, Adam yeah. Scott, who read the lead. And he was kind of the dream casting for that because we we we've known him for a long time. We really wanted him to be a part of it. And then we kind of thought like, okay, well if he's in it, and I'm in it, and Jen's in it. Like, what if we asked like. Maybe we should ask Kristen. We went to Kristen next, yeah. But you knew her. Because I knew her oh. from Saturday Night Live. And I said, hey, you know, here's an opportunity for you to do something that you don't really get asked to do a lot. And it was an opportunity for her to kind of stretch. And she said, yeah, it's, I love the script. And that was kind of every, everybody we sent the script to it came back. Like, oh, my God, I love this script. I'd love to do it. Uh, and even Maya, I think Maya and Megan and Eddie were the last three to really sign on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, some, some of it happened just during the regular casting process. Um, Chris O'Dowd's agents really, they were keen on the role for him. I took a meeting with him. I didn't know his work. He's the most charming man on the planet, you know. Then he auditioned for us with an American accent, and um, that was done and done. And I took a meeting with Megan and didn't know, you know, much about her other than the persona. And I found this smart, witty, sassy, funny, irreverent young woman. It was, it was a great opportunity for us, obviously, to have her join uh, our cast. And I think for her, she hadn't really had the opportunity to do comedy. And now she's doing more and more of it, which is cool. I think there was sort of across the board this, this idea that we all get typecast all the time, you know, including Adam, um, you know, partly in the, in the process to get it made. Certain people just knew Adam for his comedic work in Party Down and Parks and Rec, and they were like, yeah, he's a fantastic, charming comedic actor, but we need a ranger, we need dramatic chops. And we were like, are you kidding me? We've been watching watch him vicious kind. be like, brilliant for 15 years. And, like, and, and we know him forever, and know him as, as a stage actor and a r really talented guy that can do it all. And, yeah. and that is part of the, the, the thing you fall into, and what, what was a big you know, selling point for a lot of our actors? Whether it's Megan and, and or Kristen or, or Adam, yeah. and it was a it was a great opportunity, which kind of you only get in the independent world, 
to show another side. Now everyone's like, Adam Scott, where did he come from? It's like, he's always been this brilliant, always, 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 always and he's always been able to do anything. Well, isn't that the case with everybody? I mean, even with you, you know, everybody mm -hmm. now knows you, but yeah. really before Mad Men, they didn't really so know you a lot. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a lot of fans from the division still, so, <laughs> I mean, life, you know, Lifetime has a big following. It and, did. And it was actually very that's good. That's what really got this movie made. This is your first time directing. Yeah. Did you storyboard a lot of it out? How'd you prepare for it? Um, well, I was I was terrified, and again, uh, Will Rexer was such a great partner and collaborator, my cinematographer, and he was endlessly patient with me and generous with me, fielding questions 24/7, and we would look at so many films together and sort of find visual references and. You know, dealing with actors was the part that felt natural to me. I know how to talk to actors and what actors need to feel safe and cared for and, and comfortable. But everything else was just like steepest learning curve imaginable. And we would sit and look scene by scene and I would act out all the parts and be like, and then I want to flurry, then he comes from here and then there's a thing and then you, you know, you call upstairs and then a door comes and he comes out of the bathroom and, you know, and acting out all the parts and and then talking about how we could possibly cover that um, in the short amount of time we had, you know, to do that scene or, or, or whatever. And then we would watch, you know, all of these, for example, we have three key scenes at, at you know, dinner scenes with a lot of people. So we just watched so many films and how they sort of handled ensemble table scenes. And we watched The Big Chill and Hannah and Our Sisters and The Celebration and all of these, you know, different films and sort of how they, um, how they did it and we we shot listed endlessly we sort of made these foolproof plans and then of course we'd have to throw them out the window when we would like, when hmm. the Three time was behind, going and yeah. there was everybody gets one take let's go sleep and they're like oh well it was a great plan but here we are let's get something the dining room scene when you guys were in Vermont that was so well shot we're first time director that's incredible but the scene that really got me was when you were in the he was the first time that Adam was in the baby's room in your new yeah, place handheld. and you were pushing so close in it was so uncomfortable because you could feel how uncomfortable he was did you do that on purpose or you know Oliver um, who was our, our um, camera operator on that we decided to go handheld in that scene because we couldn't get the performance from the the young boys who had melted down and most of our day went and so we had to you know make that decision on the fly to be handheld because we had no child to you know it was just me and Adam framed out and in a way, we kind of thought it had a nice, gritty intensity to it, um, that fly on the wall feeling. So it became kind of a happy accident. And then we ended up shooting all of the stuff in Julie's Brownstone that way, you know, including the tantrum scene, which we shot after, even though it came before. And a big part of that, too, is, is the nature of shooting on location in New York City. I mean, you're in these apartments that are tiny, tiny yeah. and you can't get a dolly in there and you can't get sticks in there and you just have to kind of, you know, all, poor Oliver was make, contorting his body into shapes <laughs> yes. that no human should it's have very, to. very, very agile. Um, but, but it does, it, it, it provides an, an immediacy to it and, and it gives a sense of like, oh, we're in a different, we're in a different place, not just physically, we're in a different place emotionally and that yeah. was helpful, I think, toward the end of the film. And and also the the Vermont dinner scene, I mean, we, we had three cameras that day and we just kept changing the angles and it, it was sort of like this long run of a one-act play. We just kept running it and I always had one angle on, on Adam or John, no matter what. And then we sort of made our way around the table. It was so well shot. Oh. Um, you ask it in the movie several times, so I, different ways, but I just have to ask, uh, shark or crocodile? <laughs> uh, alligator. Oh, uh, sorry, shark or alligator? I am, uh, I am shark. And, and why? Because uh, I like <laughs> sharks. Well, there you go. And shark I, or alligator? I actually am the person who is terrified of the ocean, so I don't. It's not going to come up for me. Seriously, I'm like, don't want to swim in the ocean. But you if you're in a plane, I know, I know. But and I the think, plane goes down. I know. I so do you, that you, point, ha you have I, to. I think that you have to. Think, you have to pick one or the other. Because of my Many nature, to zero. because of my nature, I think I'd have a heart attack as we start to go down. That's not the option. That's the answer. That's not the option. <laughs> then I would go with shark. Also, you see, it's about love. It's about love. This is why the two of you are together. Well, thank you both for coming in. I appreciate Thanks it. For having us.